So a few days ago, I made a video where I talked about how I was going to distro hop from Arch to Fedora, and I tried to make it clear in that video that this was for a good period of time, because I was sick of messing up Arch, and I take full responsibility for my Arch system crapping out on me, and I will continue to do that, but I wanted a stable system. I was just ready to stop the madness that sometimes comes with Arch. So I hopped to Fedora and there were a few, how shall we say, snarky comments in the comment section of that video claiming that I would never make it more than a day on Fedora. Well, here I am, like five or six days past that, and I'm still on Fedora. So nana nana boo boo. I can't believe I just said that. I did just say that. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I should edit that part out, but I probably won't. Anyways, the point is, is that I'm still on Fedora and I'm learning some interesting things. I talked a little bit in that video, or maybe it was a video after that, about how I had gotten away from the idea or the knowledge of how to actually build packages. Because I was so reliant on the AUR, I never had to actually build anything for myself. An AUR helper just did it for me, right? So over the last few days, I've built more packages on Linux than I probably ever have before. Because not everything is in the Fedora repositories. It's not the AUR, unfortunately. And while I have been somewhat impressed with what is in the Fedora repositories, there's just some, like I said, stuff that's just not there. So I've had to build quite a bit of stuff. But Fedora does have a solution for the things that aren't in its repositories. And that is called COPR. Now, COPR stands for Community Projects. And when it was first introduced to me, it was introduced as the AUR of Fedora. And in some ways, it is like the AUR, but on Fedora. In other ways, it's not really the AUR in Fedora. First of all, let's just talk about what it is, and then we can talk a little bit about what it isn't. What it aims to do is give you access to a community-maintained repository, or actually a whole bunch of repositories, of software that is never going to make it into the main Fedora repositories. So things that are actually compiled by the community. So in that way, it's very similar to the AUR, right? That is a collection or a repository of software that is put together by the community. And that's exactly what COPR is. It is a collection of software put together by the community. And similar to the AUR, you're going to find a lot of libraries on COPR. These are libraries that are maintained by the community that really don't need to be included by Fedora in their repositories. And just like the AUR, you'll also find a lot of software that is very niche, so it's not really needed by a lot of people, therefore, again, not ever going to be put into the main repositories. That's the kind of gist and the similarities you're going to have with the AUR. You're going to have a wide selection of software. According to the COPR website, which I can actually show you right here, there are 19,074 projects on COPR. Now, that is pretty impressive. That's a lot of software. I would bet, and I have no backing evidence to support this claim, but I would bet that the vast majority of that software is probably libraries for software development. I could be wrong about that, but from what I've seen, like, so for example, if I search for Rofi Emoji here, and that'll take a minute to come up, that's one thing you'll notice about it is that it's very, very slow to search, but that's kind of beside the point. If you see the results when they do come up, you'll notice that they are very much software development related. I mean, if you were to look through the AUR, you'd probably see that the vast majority of the stuff in the AUR is also software development related, just because it's easier for the community to maintain a whole bunch of libraries than it is to have a small group of people at Fedora to do it. So now that that's up, you can kind of like I see, you can see there's a whole bunch of Python stuff here and stuff like that. One thing you don't see actually is Rofi Emoji. That's not actually there. And that's where we're going to start talking about the differences just a little bit. First of all, it's not as big as the AUR. It's never going to be that big. It's not that big now. And like I said, the vast majority of stuff you search for on it is not there. Unfortunately, that's just kind of the way it is. Uh, I've searched for Rofi Emoji. I've looked for NC Spot. It's not, stuff like that's there. Now, there are some exceptions to this. So like UberZug is there. So if you don't know what UberZug is, that's a plugin or a terminal tool that allows you to view images inside of a terminal. It's useful for things like Ranger and stuff like that, where you can 
view images inside of Ranger. So there are some opportunities for just regular people who use Fedora to use the COPR and find software that they need. So those are golden opportunities because they don't happen all that often, unfortunately. The other place where COPR kind of differs from the AUR is that it's not a single repository. When I was first in introduced to the COPR, I was really excited because I thought it was like, you know, it can, a Fedora maintained repository, a Fedora hosted repository that is maintained by the community. Like every, it's a place where people like pull all the software and you can just go there and it's like the AUR. That's not the way it works. Really, every single thing you're looking at here is hosted on their own repositories. And when I say hosted, I'm not really taking like where the software resides, but each one of these is their own repository. So if you want to add this, you do sudo dnf enable, oops, excuse me, sudo dnf copr enable, and then the username of the person who's, who's created the repository, and then the name of the, the repository. And then you'd hit that, and then you could do sudo dnf install, whatever it is, right? So, for example, the uberzug, I don't really remember who, who the username, so you just do user, and then the name of the repository was uberzug, like so. I'd hit that, and then I could do, after I, that was done, you could do sudo install uberzug, like so. Because it was adding, it added that repository to your list of sources. Now, if that seems familiar to you, that's because it is familiar to you, because if you've ever used Ubuntu prior to the snap days, and you've added a PPA, that's the exact process of adding a PPA in Ubuntu. You add the repository, then you can install the software. That's exactly the way the PPAs work. The difference between this and PPAs is that people host their own PPAs. It's usually on their own web server. As far as I can tell, COPR is hosted by Fedora. Like people will put their repositories on Fedora's, or the, in this case, the Fedora InfraCrowd's website and their, their web server, that's where it's hosted. So that's a little bit different than PPAs, but the process of adding them is almost exactly the same. Now, maybe there's some technological things underneath it that are completely different. That's probably the case, but the user facing actions of doing this is exactly the same, same as PPAs. And if you've ever used a PPA, you'll know that it has inherent problems. So one of the problems, and it's the biggest problem, is that by doing it this way, a lot of the software that you're going to encounter is really out of date. Like I'm talking about years and years out of date because the person who created the repository no longer maintains it. And it doesn't matter that Fedora hosts the stuff. You still have the same problem with P as you do with PPAs in that people will create a repository for a piece of software that they need, which is usually the reason why someone would, cre would create a repository and then they just ignore it or forget about it. You know, and that piece of software will never be updated again. Now, there is a mechanism on CPR where it actually builds the software, right? And one, one of the reasons why that's interesting isn't necessarily because it does anything for the user. You still have to get it on your computer, but it is interesting from a, a user or consumer perspective in that you'll find a lot of projects that fail to build. So whether or not they're too old to build or they rely on a library that is out of date or too far ahead, whatever may be the case, you'll find a lot of software that is considered failed and you won't be able to download it or get it to work on your computer. So those two things where either the software is significantly out of date or you find packages that just won't run is pretty common. I've come across several of them that are in that case. One of them actually being Uberzug, one of the repositories that I found Uberzug on, that was two years old. And it wouldn't run because it relied on Python libraries that were much older, and we're farther ahead than that now. Another aspect of this whole thing being like PPAs is that anyone can create a repository. Therefore, if you search for Uberzug, multiple people have uploaded repositories with Uberzug on it. And which one you use is kind of hit or miss because you kind of got to go through them all to find one of them that will finally work. And that is kind of a big downside because it takes time to go through those things. Now, I can hear the people out there who don't like the AUR already saying, well, Matt, you have out of date projects on the AUR all the time. That's absolutely true. But the AUR has a very good moderation team that does a good job of m marking packages as out of date. So that happens all the time. 
And because there's so much software on the AUR, you are almost certainly presented with the most update, up-to-date stuff when you search for it because there's just so much stuff there. You're never going to find a situation in the AUR where you don't find the thing you're looking for, or at least it's going to be very, very rare. Now, the whole point of this was I wanted to see if the COPR was comparable to the AUR. And the bottom line is that it's just not. It's just not anywhere close to the AUR, and anyone who tries to tout it as a replacement for the AUR is just lying to you, because it's just not. Now... It's possible, maybe even likely, that there are aspects to the COPR that I'm missing. So maybe it's good for developers in a way that is just not good for me. It's 100% possible that if you need a whole bunch of libraries for your, th for your development project, the COPR is a great place to get it. But for mainstream software that is not available in the main repositories of Fedora, it's not the greatest thing because just a lot of the stuff isn't there and you can't really blame it. It's nice that it exists. It's just if you go into it with the expectation like I did of it being a good replacement for the AUR, I wasn't expecting one to one. I was the AUR is gold standard. You're never going to find something that is as good as the AUR, but I was expecting it to be at least in the same ballpark. It's not. Unfortunately, it's just not. So that is the COPR. I like I said, I'm glad that it exists, and I think that it has potential, but it also has some of those same pitfalls that PPAs do, and that's just kind of disappointing. So, that is it for this video. If you have comments about this, you can leave those in the comment section below. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at the LinuxCast. If you want to follow me on Mastodon or any of my other social media networks, you can do so. Those links are in the video description below, right below the like button, as they say. If you want to support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, you are welcome to do so. I truly do appreciate everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. It is just continually blowing my mind that people support me in whatever manner that they can. So I really truly do appreciate it and I never have the appropriate words or the uh, significant amount of words that I would need to say thank you as much as I need to. So thanks everybody for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.